Hello, everyone. Welcome to Intrigue, the podcast where we talk to people from different industries. Today, we're joined by Subhathara Chandra Sakharan. Subhathara, welcome to the show. Hey, Reza. How are you? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Amazing. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, uh, thank you for podcast. coming. Yeah. yeah. So excited to dig into your career. But before that, let's talk about your childhood. So tell me about where you grew up. What did you like to do as a kid? Go for it. Okay. So I'm Subhatra and I'm basically from South India. So I was born and brought up in South India. So oh, that's where part? I studied. Um, Tamil Nadu. Like I, I'm from Trichy, from a place called Trichy. Mm. Is it a small town, big city? Uh, Trichy is a small town. Um, mm. But I mean, currently it's like a big city. But when I grew up, it was like a small town. So that's where I, uh, most of my, I mean, all of my childhood was there. So, mm. um, I mean, I, I was always like, even now, if you see, like, I'm not like a talkative kind of person. So I I have always remained like a, a quiet child, <laughs> like mm. a a not very naughty kind of child. Like uh, that's how I was like from my childhood. Um, so I, I mean, I did my schooling in Trichy um, in a very uh, big institution, like where they had um, school and college in the same campus. Mm. So, Was this kind of like middle, elementary, middle and high school together? Uh, it, it starts from sixth grade. So uh. like kind of a middle school. Yeah, I mean, in, in India, there is no concept of like uh, elementary, middle. So only they have the high school, like 11th and 12th. Mm. So I went to the same campus from my sixth grade till my master's. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was basically for like 12 years. So, yeah, that's a, like a, a very uh, unique kind of experience. I think uh, no no one ever had like the same experience like me mm. um, going to the same campus for so many years. Wait, why did you stay? Why didn't you go out and explore like after 12th grade? Um, no, I mean, uh, my parents, like their work, both their work were like based out of Trichy. So uh -huh. we were not able to relocate anywhere and they were like not uh, ready to send me out. So, um, I mean, the, wherever I studied, like it was one of the best institutions. So mm. we never had like any regrets. So we just, I just continued there. Mm, in terms and of, I like, was like a, a mile and a half from the campus, so it was so easy for us. Like I can just walk every day to school. Oh, that's so convenient. And yeah. then academically, what subjects did you like? Um, I was actually very uh, good in math, so um, I even in my board exam I scored like full score in math. So uh, in my high school, so that was like. Uh, that really proved that, okay, I'm good at something. <laughs> mm. And then like going into college, like what was your thought process, choosing a uh, major? Actually, um, I wanted to do engineering, uh, but I, we have something called a, a different kind of entrance exam for the engineering colleges back in India. Mm -hmm. So I missed the cutoff, like I didn't do well in that. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, I couldn't get into the merit seat. Uh, but I was able to like, if I pay more, I can go like, I was in a situation where if I can pay more, I can get a seat. Uh, but then we decided we didn't want to do that. So I, I mean, my, my dad decided that I should do my bachelor's in mathematics. Oh, because I was good in math. He said, why don't you uh, try your bachelor's in mathematics? So I did my bachelor's in math. Oh, interesting. So what did your parents do for work? Uh, my uh, dad was a banker. Mm. He, was, he was working in a bank. And my mom was a, a government employee. She was working in a government office. Mm. Did they ever like influence you? Or did you want to become a banker or a government employee at some point? Um, no, when I grew up, like uh, um, computer science was like the hottest subject uh, at that time. So... Um, uh, once I finished my undergrad, um, we decided like, I'm going to do something in computer science. Mm. So, um, my, my, I have an older brother. Um, so he, he did his master's in computer science while I was in my undergraduation. 
um so we thought okay so he got a he, he got a job and he settled immediately so my parents thought okay uh, why don't you try computer science because you are good in math and science so let's try for uh, computer science so i got uh, i did masters in computer applications mm okay so so that is like bit. a three three year masters course so mm interesting so how did your bachelor's in math shape you like what did you learn during that time math basically um even in math we had like uh, electives so i used to take like uh, computer science as a part of uh, electives during math okay it's like a combination of uh, math and uh, computer science when i was studying so i mean i uh, when even uh, when i was doing math i know like i wanted to do something with computer science so mm. uh, even um, even when I, when i was doing my masters in computer science i had some uh, math uh, electives there also like so it helped each other ah uh, okay what kind of math was it uh, we have like numerical science and everything and even um, uh, statistics was there so so many uh subjects were like uh some of them were math based what was your favorite thing in like college and your masters um in my masters i always look forward uh, we we used to have like projects in between our semesters so i always look forward to uh, doing those small projects like we get to go to companies and then we can um work as an intern there oh. so that's one of my like favorite parts because it, it'll be really like a uh, uh, a new experience for us right so uh, we used to like form a group and then just apply for companies and then we once they once we get there and then we we get to go they go to their office and work for like one or two months like an interns so that was really exciting part for me Mm. I mean it it used to give us like the t- taste of how it's how it's going to be like once we uh join full time right 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 can you talk about your first internship like how did you feel like what did you work on um my first one was like for a, for a bank mm so um obviously it was very scary for me because i i didn't know like exactly how it's going to work uh but we had like a very uh, nice um mentors there so they were like uh, leading us like all through the way like they made sure like we were comfortable there so they just give like a small module like mm-hmm. i mean if i see now like it was like uh, nothing like a big kind of project but even then since we were so young so we were so scared um, there so i remember doing something in uh, c uh, language c back then mm-hmm. uh, so we were i think i i i vaguely remember but, but something like we were designing some kind of uh, application form uh, i think for the for for some new account holders they need to fill in some forms and submit the data and then storing it in some database kind of thing mm. and then after that internship did you rejoin the same company or did you look for another one um no no i i had like couple of opportunities uh, during my masters because it was like a three years program right so right. I, i got like a couple of places and then um actually what happened was uh, right after i finished my masters i got married mm so i couldn't stay in india so i had to come back come to us my husband was working here so i had to immediately come here so i didn't work in india after that oh That's interesting. Yeah. So like right after school like went to the US fresh off the boat like right. how did you find your footing in like the labor market? Um I mean that's a very long story because uh once I came from India to US I was in a dependent visa. Ah uh. so I couldn't work immediately so um uh, also um uh, uh we my husband actually he applied for his green card so we were in the process of getting our uh, green card. so we decided like we will wait um till i get that and also my husband was traveling at the time he was he he used to travel from monday to friday and come home on friday and then he'll be there on weekends and then go back on monday so we i actually landed in boston when i came mm. so <laughs> how was that 
so boston i mean you, you know india is like uh, the place where i grew up it is like the hottest place mm. so i came to boston around like september so around the fall season i was here and then uh, initially i liked it very much because the fall will be like very pleasant right so it's like not very cold not very hot hot yeah so i i really enjoyed and uh, once we came in like we went to a lot of places around boston and um, it was li- like i i really liked it but once the december started like uh, i mean the first couple of snows i really enjoyed because i have never seen snow in snow. my life mm. but after that like i really started hating that because ah. um, in boston it used to snow uh, more often that time but i am not sure if how how it is right now so um it used to snow like very often and the roads will be all like uh, icy after like two days so you will be literally um, stuck inside the home mm-hmm. so i started hating like oh my god it's more like uh, uh, and my husband also won't be there he will be traveling right so oh no and i don't drive that time so i i didn't know how to drive so it was really like for uh, first uh, i mean the first winter was really horrible experience for me um i mean i i was i was getting so bored because there was nothing to do i don't i didn't have any friends here also so uh and then slowly everything changed i made new friends and then i started enjoying i mean i i knew like this is how i'm going to live so i slowly made a lot of friends um, how did you make friends um i mean uh, i mean winter was like that so i i couldn't meet anyone but after spring came like i started going out for walks and then i was able to i mean say hi hello and to everybody and like I, there were like a group of women around i mean uh, same age as me there so i was able to easily connect to them um i mean they were also like uh, in the dependent visa and they, they were also like stuck inside the home so we had a lot of common stories to share okay so i made a lot of friends there in boston and then um, um, i mean i was very new to cooking i love cooking so i i experiment new dishes like every day and then <laughs> take it to my friends there and they will also bring something so i mean we we tra- started trying like uh, new dishes every day and sharing and enjoying so it was like fun uh it was a potluck potluck party potluck kind of thing so i mean everybody will try new things for the i mean everybody was new around the same time they came to us right so everybody started like experimenting their cooking so mm. yeah, were they also kind of indian fun. or were they from um, other places as well some were indians and some were like um uh, uh asians yeah mm i see and then once you got comfortable in boston like what happened uh i mean i i got comfortable in boston but immediately we had to move to new jersey <laughs> oh like why did you move uh we we tried to uh, buy a house so uh, my husband actually before boston he used to live in new jersey so he liked this place very much mm. and he said like comparatively it will be less colder in new jersey um, right because it's down south right than boston and he had all his uh, uh, college friends here in new jersey so we we decided to buy the home in new jersey and move here mm. what does he do Uh, my husband i mean when I, when we got married he was an instructor at oracle so he used to go to client places every week and he will um take lessons for them like he will teach them like software uh okay oh that's uh, why the travel uh-huh yeah so every week he goes to different places mm i see so new jersey like yeah, tell me jersey. tell me about <laughs> what happened after you landed um so we bought the house and came here so i mean but here we already had a lot of friends so it was not that difficult um and uh, as soon as we moved in here i mean i was pregnant when i moved here so uh the next one year like went with the delivery and everything so it just flew like that yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah my first daughter was here so i was even more busier mm. and you weren't working at this time right no i wasn't um so it was around like 2008 or something i started working because that's when i got the ead like the the authorization to work in us how long did that take from like reaching boston until your ead card uh i th- i would say 4 years oh okay yeah 
so i mean even though i was not working but um, uh, whenever i had free time like i was doing some certification kind of thing like i studied java and then uh, did that um, um, sun certified java programmer so i mean i was basically studying a lot um, mm. because i knew like when when the ead comes i should start looking for a job right so i wanted to like make sure my skill set is like updated mm, okay um but getting into the first job is like was uh, really very hard for me uh tell me more about it like what was the process like uh so f- i mean i had so many c- criteria so maybe that's why that's why it got delayed too because my husband was traveling and my uh, daughter was very little so i wanted to go somewhere like nearby Mm-hmm. um i couldn't travel for like long distances so i was like searching i mean even though i got a lot of opportunities i didn't take it because they were all like closer to new york so it should be like one and a half hours commute for me mm-hmm. uh but finally what happened was uh, i took one of those because i had no choice um so my uh, my client was i was i was working as a consultant initially so my client was in um the client place was in sicocus uh which is closer to new york okay so i had to travel there but by that time my uh, older one was a little uh, bigger so she was in to daycare and she was okay mm-hmm. so but still like i had to travel like one and a half hours one way and then come oh. back so it was so hectic for me oh man yeah. like how early did you have to go like 6 a.m um my train usually starts at 7:15 okay So from home I'll start by 6:45. Mm. I mean I had to drop my daughter in daycare and then go so it was like uh, very uh, I mean she she will give cooking, me so much trouble. Did you do like yeah. all the cooking prior? No cooking will be done in the like previous night. Oh uh, okay. So I will plan that way but in the morning like uh, getting her up and then getting her ready and then packing everything for her like it was she will drive me crazy in the morning. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> yeah, it was like uh, horrible. Um I mean, but I, I I survived somehow like for a for a year and a half. Mm. But how so, was the job itself? Um it was a it I I joined as like a entry level developer there. So mm. since I had the Java uh, certification, I did uh, there was a product called Identity Manager. So I uh was working in that. Um it's it's a Java based product, so it was easy. Uh, I mean, since i had the certification it really helped me to get in there mm got it and then how was it compared to your internships like was the scope much larger of course it was much larger and the biggest part is like i graduated and then it was like uh, a long break for me after that i'm going to work right mm. so i i am like <laughs> i completely like uh, um and it's like in us so it's a very new place for me So I mean I had uh, so many like uh, fears fear factors so mm. uh but but the colleagues were like really helpful so I was able to survive mm interesting and then yeah. after uh, but it that... was a, it was a contract position so it was like uh, 18 months and then I got to I mean they let me go mm I see and then what so... happened after that after that what happened was i uh, i was i mean by the time i finished there i was pregnant with my second one oh uh, okay so i immediately i had to take another break mm-hmm. because uh, anyway the project ended there so and then i was in a break for like i think close to 2 years mm okay yeah and then again i uh, but but the next time i decided i am not going to go to the development because i i had so much to catch up So I thought I'll go on something lighter. So I picked QA. Mm. So I did a, a I did a like a six months training in QA. So I mean to get familiar with like the process because I have never done that before. So oh, can you talk about yeah. what QA is and what you learned during that training for the audience so the, who doesn't the know? Training um, training was basically for uh, manual testing. So I didn't go for any automation kind of training. Okay. But the manual like how do we um like write test cases in Jira and how do we execute the test cases um that kind of thing like uh, from the user perspective like how do you uh, see like how do you how can you efficiently write test cases right mm. 
so those kind of things it it was like uh, very helpful for me because i have never uh, written test cases or anything like that before so um so that was uh, going on like manual testing but then i i studied selenium like by myself after doing that because there is no like a 100% manual qa position anywhere right so we need to know some kind of automation um since i had some java fundam- fundamental things known so i tried selenium so i learned selenium and then started looking for a job so i landed in infosol after that so infosol but actually in infosol um it was a different kind of testing it was like etl testing oh what is etl testing um etl is basically kind of a, like a data comparison testing mm. because it, they will have like a heavy loads of data and then they will uh, expect it in some uh, specific format okay so we need to compare like the input versus the output like if it is in the correct format or not mm-hmm. okay so that kind of testing it was like uh, really like a uh, you should be really focused on testing there because it's like data testing right so um but there was not much automation i did there so it was mostly manual mm okay how long did you stay there um that was um around 2 years mm got it and yeah. it, it was a lot I, of manual testing like did you do other things as well um i mean they they used a tool called the pentaho uh, for it, it's an etl tool Mm. so i got an opportunity to like learn that tool like they, they had like some training programs when when i was working there so i enrolled in some of the trainings and then i was studying the etl tool i mean but i never uh, got an opportunity to work on it mm, okay and how was like adjusting to that job cuz you had a break prior to that right right i mean uh, in between if you see my career like every in between every job i have like a huge break yeah um i mean uh, it was like an intentional thing but uh, i feel like again getting back to the track was always like a challenge for me mm, can you talk more about like the specifics like what kind of challenge you had to go through um challenges like um it will start from preparing the resume itself because we need something to put in there right so yeah. obviously they will say like what were I, what was i doing during the break they might want to know Mm-hmm. so definitely i have to uh, study something or do some certifications or do something so uh, so preparing the resume itself is the challenge number 1 mm-hmm. and then uh, facing the interview is of course um, the next challenge so mm-hmm. i mean it, it needs lot of uh, homework right mm-hmm. so when especially when you take a break your mind also will be like not in a, a very active state so you will you'll be more relaxed and you you won't even think about work a lot of time so when, once you start searching for job that's when you will like uh you need to catch with the pace right you you you'll be like very slowed down during the break so once you want to look for job you have to immediately like um what to say like uh, you should be on your toes mm. so i mean that was uh um that that's always a challenge for me mm like did you let's say budget a certain number of hours like oh i want to take this certification and then oh right. i want to make this resume like did you plan out your time so i i have like whenever my uh, younger daughter she goes to school so that is the time frame i have like when she steps out of the house i'll immediately start to sit and focus on what i should do so i i usually get like 3 to 4 hours every day so that is more than enough for me um because i have to i i do lot of uh, uh, reading and preparation for like interviews mm-hmm. and then uh, um your uh, resume ha- also needs like rework um so those were like time consuming for me mm, did you get any help from anyone else um Yeah my husband uh he helps me a lot so um that's it like um, I mean I I I usually I'm not a person who like uh, openly goes out and asks for help so mm. 
Yeah, I was doing fine. I mean, I was not desperate, so I was like, okay. I I I was like, I decided to just uh, take it easy mm. and just give it a try. I I decided like I'll give my best, and whatever happens is, <laughs> yeah. I'll just leave it like that. Yeah. Amazing. So, so you got this job for like almost two years, and then you left, right? Yeah, I mean uh, that was a consulting position too, so I had to uh... obviously. Uh, once the contract was over, I was so the next time I decided I'm gonna do only full time. Okay. Because this process was like uh, stressing me a lot, so I decided to go for full time. Uh, that's when I got this uh, ALK opportunity. Can you tell me more about it? Like, how did you get the job, and like what you did at ALK? So I, I mean, I came across this opening uh, from ALK. Um, I mean, Trimble was ALK back then when I joined. So um, the, I mean, it it was like uh, I, I would say like it was a, a destiny or I don't know. So when I was doing the QA training, I mentioned early, right? So um, so those uh, I had a lot of contacts uh, through this through that course. Like I had so many. I I was I mean I had contact with so many people who did the course and they landed up in different companies, right? Yep. So they will tell that whenever there is an opening, they will just share it in our group so that anybody who is looking can just apply. Mm-hmm. So like that only I got this um, ALK opportunity. Mm. Uh, but they said like clearly it's going to be an intern initially and then depending on our performance, it will be full time. Okay, so internship. Yeah, I was really hesitant in the uh, beginning because, um, I mean, I was working, right? So, I, I I mean, I was not a really like an intern intern. Um, but then I, I, but this, the workplace is very close to where I live. Okay. So, I, I decided, okay, whatever, let's, let's give it a try. So, that's how I came to ALK. Mm, and then how was your internship experience? Uh, internship was like really uh, fun here because um, I was working uh, when I started. I started working with Mylon, so Mylon is like a, a trip planning uh, mobile application. You know that, right? So I mean, the audience doesn't, but yeah. Yeah, so it, it's a mobile app. So um, I mean, it was very exciting because um, I mean, I have always used Google Maps, so I, I have never known this dimension of maps right yeah so um really excited to start with my lawn so i i mean i was the only uh qa i mean aparna was doing some testing with my lawn and then when i came to my lawn she handed it over to me and then she went to trip management oh okay so uh, i was reporting to aparna at that time so um so aparna is one of our teammates Yep. Uh, for the audience. <laughs> mm, so like, did she mentor you along the way? Like, what was your relationship yeah, with her like? Um, I mean, I was, I, I was doing a different kind of testing in my previous work. And this was like totally different. Mm. Um, in my lawn, like, uh, I mean, she had all those test cases and everything. So initially what I was doing was just executing those test cases whenever there is a release. Uh, and that's pretty much I was doing. Um, but then um, after, uh, after I think I, I, I became full-time in like one and a half months. Mm, oh, that's fast. Yeah, George came and then he said, uh, he'll, he offered me full-time. Exactly, that's when Trimble acquisition happened. Oh, so ALK became Trimble Maps and Trimble then you Maps. became a full-time employee. Right. Amazing. Yeah, so, I mean, it was very quick and then... Um, even when I was doing internship, I didn't feel like an intern. I was like <laughs> positioning myself as a full-time all the time. So I don't know. Um, so, I mean, I was confident that I will definitely make it. So, um, mm-hmm. I mean, thanks to George, he gave me the opportunity. Um, so once I became full-time, I, I thought I should do something more on my lawn rather than just executing the test cases. So I spoke with George and he said, um, you can try automating uh, the application. So I spoke with him and then I said, like, I have some Java uh, knowledge. So um, I would try to uh, um, experiment on Appium. Uh, like uh, there is a product called like Selenium's mobile uh, version is Appium. Mm-hmm. So I, it's a framework like for automating mobile applications. Okay. 
so i started studying apm and then i uh, automated a lot of mobile uh, test cases for mylon mm how was that learning experience did you learn like outside of work hours or like during work hours tell us more no i i usually do all the studying part outside the work hours like mm. uh, when i'm home i'll do all the lo- studying but when i'm at work i'll do all the experiments like <laughs> how to test the uh, thing right so the with, with the i mean the challenge initially i had was um, both android and ios need to be tested so those cross platform uh, things were like very challenging for me Mm-hmm. uh but uh, um so i had a colleague uh, his name is walter so he helped me a lot like he was the ios developer for the mylon application when i when i joined mm-hmm. because i was not familiar with a lot of mac uh, concepts like right. mostly windows only i was working with so he um, helped me a lot like uh, we got a mini mac and then we tried like installing apm in the mac machine and then um we automated the ios app also mm so did you approach him or like did he approach you how did that work i mean it, uh, we were going to office every day right so uh, we meet i mean he was actually completely remote so oh. he he actually once came to the office uh, i don't remember what occasion was it he came in person to the office and that's when i was like telling him um so how, how how do i do this with the ios uh, application because android was like working very smoothly the automation like went like very smoothly with android so i didn't have to worry much but the ios was completely new for me so i spoke with him because he was the developer for the ios uh, mm-hmm. app so he he was he had more knowledge so um so he helped me with the installation and everything and then slowly i started like uh, uh pinging him every once in a while and then um i mean once i got the hang of it i just uh took it myself mm amazing so now that you have the app automated like what was next for you um so when um when mylon was going good um so mylon actually it uses a, a product called trip management as its back end so right. and uh, the trip management needed a qa so they i mean since i was working with mylon for like 2 years they decided like i'll be the best fit for testing trip management as well mm-hmm. because in trip management there was like a transition from qa to dev so aparna wanted to move to dev so there was no qa in trip management right so you start so that's up. when um, they asked me to do both <laughs> mylon is actually once we set up everything the automation and manual testing only when there is a release i'll have lot of work mm-hmm. so on the other days i'll just be, be like uh, uh, polishing my test cases and stuff like that so so we decided okay let me do both trip management and uh, mylon mm-hmm. how was that transition transition was uh, i mean smooth because um, when i when i moved to trip management aparna was still doing the testing but she will be like uh, a 50 50 like 50% development and 50% uh, testing okay so we made sure like uh, we had uh, enough time for knowledge transfer because um, even though i was uh, we, i know like how trip management works from the mylon perspective i didn't know much details about other services that were in trip management so i mean aparna really helped me a lot even now she's helping me so uh, it's like she made sure like i understand everything like she um, shared all the existing tests with me mm. uh but then uh, after nirjar came everything like totally changed it was the manager right right the manager like he he had a different uh, perspective like he wanted to do the ci cd right so all the tests were like uh, um we we need to like put the test in different location previously it was like it was in one centralized location and we were uh, updating those but then he came and he introduced the ci cd so where like each service will have their own test in the repo itself mm. so that was like a big change and then uh, we we slowly got used to that kind of uh, deployments and testing Mm, can you explain what 
putting tests in CICD means or what CICD is for people who don't know? So, um, so we have uh, CICD means any kind of deployment will be automated through CICD. That's when like uh, if there is any change in code, um, the code will be like automatic, uh, the repo will be automatically get, getting deployed to the QA and then it will be scheduled to deploy to pre-prod and it will be just automatically deployed rather than like someone manually seeing Pressing the a start passing. Yeah. Yeah. And then it will be like automatically scheduled to go ahead. Got it. So what we did is like we have uh, uh, something called integration test within the repo itself. So only when the integration test pass, it will get deployed. Otherwise, it will fail. So that is the big change that was made. And then um, so we have to make sure our integration tests are always like up to date. Mm. And in trip management, if you see, it's not like a, a small number of services. It has like huge number of um, services, microservices. So uh, and, and there will be like 10 deployments in a day. So sometimes more, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I mean, we 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 never even know like until it's deployed. Like, oh my God, this much services went today, like that. So, uh, I mean, it was initially very challenging um, because the integration test, like, I, I mean, uh, I was the only QA uh, in trip management, so it made even more um, stressful for me because. Uh, uh, and then and then I I spoke with my manager and said like, this is becoming too much. Because, um, I mean, I, I was able to handle, but still, like, I wanted to make sure, like, I, I wanted to let him know that uh, even Mylon was there on my plate at that time. So there will be Mylon releases and a lot of things will be, like, coming and going. So I, I communicated with him and told him, like, um, this is a little bit stressful. So, uh, so he understood and, and then he, uh, like... Um, he got a different plan. He said, like, the developers also should uh, look at the test. When they add something new, they have to make sure it has the corresponding test case in the integration test. So some some changes he did. So, yeah, that, that worked well. Mm. So it was good. So it, it got some testing off your plate and into our plate, <laughs> the developers. Right, <laughs> into the developer's plate. Mm. But how was yeah. that transition? Like, how were, how did you focus your time now that the testing is like, maybe like more of it is off your plate? Like, what did you work on? Um, no, always I have that uh, uh, like a default task of fixing the failing test cases. Uh, so not all the tests will be like passing all the time. Right. So some test cases always will be needing like some fixes. So we had like uh, an auto tester where we like every day run uh, tests in there. Mm. So we have a dashboard that we maintain. So every day uh, when we come, like we can see the dashboard and see what are all the tests passed and what are all uh, failed. Mm. So um, so those like I have to constantly monitor them. So if something fails, I have to find out and investigate like why it failed. Uh, was it like if I adding a delay will help or like uh, it really failed there, like there was really a bug or something. Mm -hmm. So we uh, like, luckily we have like a lot of uh, logging done. Like we have a lot of exception channels in Slack where we can log all the errors. Right. So right. Uh, it'll be easy to find out if there is really a bug. That's why the test failed or like it is just a, like a slowness. That's because of some factor so we will just increase the delay and then the test pass so these investigation and fixing the test will, will be always there in my plate mm, what happens if you find a bug i obviously like create a bug ticket and then assign it to my uh, project manager so he will uh, during the sprint planning he will just assign it to whoever was, was working on it but if it is a critical uh, bug then immediately somebody will be like taking a look at it mm, who determines if it's critical or not um, I mean, in QA, if we see something, obviously, like if it is something too easy to fix, um, I, I, I would say to the PM, like it's a minor fix, we can just immediately do it. But if it's something big and it's time consuming, he will, I think, uh, depending on the use case, he will decide like if it's a critical one or not. Mm, okay.
So if he is waiting for some change and it needs to get deployed within a timeline, that's when he will decide like it's a critical one. Got you. So after this stage in your, I guess, QA career, like what, how did you keep growing? Like how did your role change? Um, so um, I, like, uh, like I said, uh, automation was always my uh, favorite thing to do. So I started learning UI automation because we had a web application called Route Reporter. So that got added to my plate. Right. So for UI automation, I wanted to learn something. So we learned Cypress. Um, that is, again, a JavaScript-based automation tool, UI automation tool. So, uh, I mean, that was very interesting uh, to learn something. Like, if I learn some new tool, like, I'll be really excited. Mm. Can you give us an example of like an automated test for a UI application? Like just one example of what you would test. Okay. So for a UI application, um, uh, since it's like UI, we have a lot of elements in a web application, right? So we will have a text box, we'll have a button, we'll have a list. Uh, we will have so many elements in a web application. So what basically the UI testing will do is like it will assert for each of the element to be present in a page. Like, I mean, every every uh, page in a web application has some acceptance criteria. Like these and all should be present. And if there is a button, it should be enabled and user should be able to click it, right? And then if it is a, um, if it is a map, it should have all the icons visible. And then if it, if it has a, like a route line, the line should be visible. Mm. So, and then it should be zoomed in a particular um, level. So we have so many um, criteria for each of the uh, pages in a web application. So based on that, we will write assertions. So we can get the ID of each of the web element in the web application. So there is a way to get the ID of each element. So every ID will be unique. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, as a developer, you know, like when you code, you give an ID to each of the elements, right? Yep. So we we use that ID to uniquely identify each web element. And then we assert on based on that. I mean, if if something to, should be enabled or sometimes it's something should not be enabled. So something should be disabled. So we just make sure we put assertion for each of them. So, so it's easier, like we don't have to manually look in the screen and then test manually rather than that, we can just assert each one. Mm. And when do these tests run? Uh, we, we usually, what we do is uh, we set up a Jen- Jenkins job and then it will be run like uh, in a scheduled uh, delay. Like uh, for us, like in QA, I run it like every day. Mm. And then it will post the result in the Slack channel. So we can integrate it with Slack. So we'll, we'll get notified if the test fails or even the, if the test passes. Mm, interesting. And how have you liked UI testing versus, let's say, Mylon or backend testing? Um, I mean, UI testing, I, I like, but uh, there there is not like we usually do a lot of changes with the UI testing, right? So once the basic smoke test is set up, so only if there is a change, then we'll be doing some change with the test cases. But mm. backend is not like that. So there are so many um, things uh, involved in backend. So I, I mean, I, I prefer both, but I enjoy doing uh, backend testing more. Oh, it's more dynamic, more things going yeah, on. Yeah, right. So we get new features every time. So it's like, uh, it'll make us think more. Mm. Oh, can you explain what a smoke test is for the audience? Um, smoke test is basically, um, it's not like an in-depth test. It's like a, a basic functionality test. Like for if, if for example, if you take a login page, you should be able to enter the username. You should be able to enter the password and you should be able to click the sign in button, right? So that is a basic functionality of any login page. So that is what we call a smoke test. Mm. Whereas if we are going to do a, like an in-depth test, that's we that's what we call as regression testing. Oh, what is regression testing? Regression testing is, um, so it's it's going to be more like an end-to-end testing. So if if you see if there is any change in one of the uh, modules, so we make sure like not all the other modules are affected by this change. So mm. we run like an end-to-end integration test. So make sure like nothing is broken because of this change. 
So that's what we call like uh, regression testing. Uh, what other types of testing are there? Um, smoke test, regression test. Uh, what else is there? Functional test. What is that? Functional test is basically like our postman kind of thing. Like the API endpoints, we just basically uh, run, like test each endpoint, right? Individually. So it's just basically testing the single functionality. Mm, okay. Right. So, I mean, we, we usually, um, in our uh, project, we usually, what we do is whenever any new APIs are written, we have a collection that supports that, right? So we make sure all the endpoints are working. Right. Yeah. That's so, what we usually call as functional testing. Gotcha. So smoke test, regression, functional, anything else um, that we should I mean, know? I mean, I'm like uh, bad in using those terms exactly. Uh, yeah, integration test is there, end-to-end -end testing is there, and then functional testing is there, smoke test, regression test, yeah. Mm. Right. Is integration testing like end-to-end -end testing? Is that the same term? or No, I I integration not necessarily be like end-to-end. -end. Integration can be just in between two components. Also, we can just say that Got it's it. an integration test, right? Gotcha, yeah. yep. Awesome. And so, oh, I have a question. So sure. what would so like i'm a developer what would make your job easier like as a developer what can i do to make your job easier um obviously you can make a lot of things but one of the things is like uh you run like a basic test locally before you deploy something mm. so in that case like uh, we can save a lot of time because once it gets deployed and then I find it out and then you it gets to you and then you fix it again and then it comes to me and then right, I again. the back and forth. So yeah. that is like uh, easily it can be avoided if uh, if some kind of basic testing is done at the developer's end. Mm. I mean, that's what I feel. I mean, if it is sometimes it will be very uh, like a silly uh, bug that could be like re easily avoided. Mm. Right. So got it. Yeah. Awesome. So you have UI testing at this point. Like, how how did that change? Did you keep doing the same tasks, or has anything changed since then? Um, I don't think anything changed. But uh, um, I mean, I I I I always like keep on improving my test cases, right? So uh, if some different uh, use case comes, like if if user complains of a of a a different bug like a unique bug that we have we have never even thought of like uh testing so those kind of things will if, if it comes i'll uh revisit all my test cases and then uh, make sure i catch them uh correctly mm. do you enjoy testing more or developing because you've done both yeah so uh, i mean personally i would say i i would like to become a developer oh why is that I mean, I, I love coding, so I feel like when I do automation stuff and kind of like those things, I, I really enjoy more. Mm. So, yeah, let's see. I I don't know what's the plan uh, for now. Yeah. So just taking it day by day. Right. So I'm, I'm right now like uh, um, getting familiar with AWS. So I did the cloud practitioner certification like last year, two years before. So I'm now studying for solution architect and see if I can clear that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I think one thing I've noticed you doing like since early in your career, like you keep learning new things every day, right. like taking certifications, yeah. classes. No, I want to keep my uh, skill sets like up to date. Mm -hmm. So that will be something that we need to do, right? Especially in uh, software engineering, we need to always keep updating ourselves, right? Right. Like, how do you budget your time? Like, now that you have a full-time job, like, learning new things on the side? Right. I mean, uh, definitely with the family and everything, it's a little tough. Not every yeah. day I'll get time. And I cannot plan also, like, uh, today I'm going to study for this much hours. That never happened because something might come. So I, I might have to go drop my kids somewhere. Something will come up. So, um, I, I mean, I try my best to make sure I, I i don't plan like for every day i plan like for a week i'll at least study for an hour something like mm. that 
Awesome. Because every day I cannot just uh, uh, dedicate time to study. Right. And like, what challenges did you face, like balancing a family and a job? Um, I mean, when, when the kids were young, obviously it was more challenging. Um, now my daughters are all like grown up. So it's, it's not that much challenging compared to before, but uh, definitely it's going to be a challenge because um, there should be a, like a, a work-life balance, right? So I always make sure like I don't compromise on my uh, family time. So I, so especially when they were so young, um, that's, that's why I, if you see my <laughs> career, like a lot of breaks also, I just, I didn't want to like uh, skip anything. So I want to be there for my family when they needed me. So uh, I mean, I don't, I don't regret any of my past decisions. Mm-hmm. What advice do you have for young moms trying to juggle both together? Um, I would say like, um, if you ask me personally, I would say um, we shouldn't like stress ourselves so much. Like, I mean, we cannot do uh, best in both, right? So somehow we we should know how to balance work and life. Mm. So And it looks different for everyone, right? Right, yeah. And it works different, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what advice do you have for like people who have been out of the workforce for a while who are trying to get in just like you did? Yeah, I am. I'm a big example for them. Like you can join anytime and uh, just uh, like, but definitely you need to put a lot of effort and like work hard, but uh, nothing is impossible. You can join back anytime. Mm. I mean, I don't think age is any criteria. Right. And then looking back at your career, would you say that you are successful? Uh, I mean, I think it's too early to (laughs) decide anything. But uh, yeah, I mean, so far, I'm really proud. Like I was able to join back and like get my career to at least a shape um, rather than just leaving it in the middle. So I'm at least proud that I was able to work out this much. Uh, But I definitely like uh, have to keep working harder so Mm. what um, does success mean to you success means if i'm happy then i'm successful that's what i feel like i shouldn't regret and i shouldn't be like uh, doing this because somebody is telling me to do this so if i personally feel happy if i really want to do this i just have to do it that's what like uh, if you ask me like are you successful in that way i will say i'm successful because i i wanted to do this and i mean doing this Mm, awesome and then they say success is a mix of hard work and luck like what percentage of your success do you attribute to hard work versus luck i would say 85 percent is hard work and maybe 15 percent is luck Mm, hard work meaning like taking certifications fixing your resume putting in the hours applying and then attending like so many number of interviews without getting depressed <laughs> we mm. should just give it a try because initially it's going to be really hard like nobody is going to welcome you after the break right so everybody mm. will be questioning a lot so we should be like prepared mentally like we shouldn't give up that's what is that what it mm. is like how did you respond when they ask you about your break i mean obviously i'll say like for my family reasons i had to take a break it's not mm. like I intentionally like, uh, I mean, I, I was never like uh, uh, fired or anything. Right. So I had a valid reason. So a lot of people will just understand, like they won't say like, why did you take a break like that? So, mm. I, I mean, it's not about the break. It's like how we project and come back after the break. That's what matters more. Mm. Amazing. And what right. you do during the break when you can, Right. Like if you can't uh, put in like, like you did, like taking lessons, doing certifications, like if I you mean, can. If we should, we should try to be like in touch with the technology somehow, because uh, the more longer you take the break, then it is difficult, very difficult to catch up because mm. in, in software industry, like uh, new technologies like come every month, there will be some change, right? So if, right. the longer the break, it's really hard. Mm. And then how do you keep up with new tech trends these days? 
um these days <laughs> i think i have i have become a little lazy after like becoming full time and then i know like okay i can manage like i have some confidence now right so mm-hmm. only if there is a, like a requirement and i am asked to do something i really do like my own study mm got it for example if cyprus i was never like uh, exposed to cyprus before so i had to learn cyprus so that's when i sat and study mm Awesome. What advice do you have for a woman trying to enter tech? Um I mean if you have the real passion to do this stuff obviously you will be like uh, uh you you need some motivation to study every day like you cannot just like skip and then just come back on after 6 months and sit and it's not going to work like that. You mm-hmm. should have that real passion that you have to keep updating yourself. You have to study keep learning keep learning yeah awesome and then last question any advice you have for young people who are lost trying to navigate their careers whether it's high school kids or like 20 year olds uh i mean for for 20 year olds <laughs> it will never be a problem so they can definitely like get back easily because uh they should be like fresh out of the college right Mm-hmm. so the the only thing is everybody has to have a, a clear focus on what they want to do mm-hmm. right so if if that is there i think 50% of the work is already done so if you oh. know what you want to do then it is very easy right how do you then, find what you want to do that's the hard part <laughs> i mean for me luckily when i did masters i knew like i want to work with computer science so mm-hmm. i mean i had i had no distractions but if people have distraction then i mean it's not again it's going to be like whatever you're going to do end of the day you should find a way to like update yourselves in that uh, field right so i think uh, you should have a focus that's what i'll advise like you should not be distracted like you shouldn't be like i don't even know what to do like if if you are like that then it's very hard Mm. so you should be focused and you should have a clear thinking of this is what i want to do mm. and for people trying to find their focus like what what can they do i think they should do a lot of experiments if you don't know what to do like you should experiment like doing like five or six jobs and then you will eventually know like which one you enjoy most right mm. i mean if you take me as an example i was developer and then i switched to qa because i thought i'll be more uh, um i i mean i i was like i wanted to take some uh, like less stressful job so i i thought qa will work better for me right. i mean that itself was a uh, change for me like i i my focus was like changed right mm-hmm. so now i feel like i'm i'm ready i'm i can learn more so i i i feel like now i should get into development so like that you will know like if you if you can do more or if this is okay for you when you try like several things i think you will you will know where you want to end up mm, so 50% of the battle is finding your focus what's the right. other 50% other 50% is i think your mindset like some people whatever they do they won't be happy so we cannot we cannot do anything about it so i think your your mindset like you should you should understand yourself mm. like how have you developed that mindset like being positive and like keep your head up keep going i think um, it it all go, goes to my the credit goes to my mom and my husband because they keep motivating me uh, my, my mom is like my greatest inspiration she always keeps like saying you can do it i mean whatever i say she doesn't even know whether i can do it or not but she will always say that you can definitely do this <laughs> mm. so i think we should have somebody to motivate us as well Mm. so surround yourself with positive people right and my daughters also they are like biggest inspiration uh, mm. because they know like i i take lot of breaks because of them right so they always say that we are okay you just go ahead oh, so that's so I sweet mean, yeah that gives me like a <laughs> very uh, positive vibe when i like when they say like that like uh, we can handle this you we got this you just go ahead so that is like we definitely need support from somebody like like that to be positive awesome well 
Well, on that note, oh, thank you so much for joining, Subhadra. Thank you, Reza.